Hi, in this video we will look at the first law of thermodynamics as applied to a control volume. And a control volume is a kind of a framework for studying any kind of a system where something flows into or out of the system, some mass flows into or out of the system. A great example is a steam turbine. And in this picture you see a steam turbine rotor out of its casing. Steam comes in uh, from the left hand side, the small diameter end, and flows from left to right and it flows over the turbine blades and does work on the turbine blades which drives the turbine shaft which can do something useful like drive an electrical generator. So a steam turbine converts energy of the steam into shaft power. Now uh, usually of course the turbine rotor is inside a casing and in thermodynamics we draw a cartoon of steam turbines that looks kind of like this. We have an inlet on the left, uh, an outlet on the right we may have uh, energy going into or out of the turbine in the form of heat, and we have energy coming out in the form of mechanical power. Now, before we get started, we need to cover uh, or review just a few uh, basic concepts. One of the most important is mass flow rate. So we're dealing here with the flowing fluid. We need to quantify how much fluid is, is flowing or how fast. So let's take it back to a very simple case, some fluid going through a pipe um, at a speed v or a velocity v, density rho, uh, the cross-sectional area is a. And let's just let that fluid flow for a very short interval of time, an infinitesimal interval dt. So during that time, we'll see a plug of fluid like that coming out the end of the pipe. Now, the length of that plug is dx. That's the distance that the fluid travels. Uh, the mass of that plug is the volume, which is a times dx, multiplied by the density rho. The mass flow rate then is the mass that's transported divided by the time, it's mass per unit time. So it's rho a dx divided by dt. And dx dt, dx divided by dt of course, is the uh, velocity. So we get uh, rho a v. And that's a very universal uh, simple equation for mass flow rate. Now it turns out you can have a transport rate of almost anything, not just mass flow rates, but you can have flow rates or transport rates of energy as well. So if you think about internal energy, which is big U, internal energy in uh, joules, total internal energy is big U. Specific internal energy is uh, internal energy per unit mass, and we write it uh, as a lowercase u. If, you have, if you've got flowing steam, and that flowing steam has some uh, specific internal energy U, joules per kilogram, if you multiply that by a mass flow rate, um, which is some number of kilograms per second, you're saying that every kilogram has U joules of energy. So if you multiply uh, m dot by U, you've got the number of kilograms per second multiplied by the number of joules per kilogram. You have a transport rate of energy, and it has dimensions of joules per second. You've got the amount of energy being moved or transported by that steam every second. You can do the same thing for um, gravitational potential energy, say. MgZ is the potential energy of a mass m. Gz is its potential energy per unit mass. m dot Gz is the rate of transport of potential energy. And you can do that for lots of different quantities, kinetic energy, enthalpy, and so on. Now, let's develop our first law then. Uh, we have to define the control volume, first of all, and it's important to be very precise about how you do this. For this example of a steam turbine, there's really um, only one choice, uh, and that is to define the control volume so that it occupies all of the space inside the steam turbine. And if we want to be really careful about this, we'll spell out where the boundaries are as well. The boundaries of this control volume are on the inside of the uh, turbine casing. Uh, except, of course, at the inlet and the outlet, there's a gap in the um, turbine casing, but the control volume boundary cuts across the inlet and the outlet. And we're going to be talking here about rates. We're going to be talking about rates like Q dot and W dot, the heat transfer and work per unit time, not overall uh, integrated quantities like Q and W. So our first law says, uh, that energy can't be created or destroyed. So one way of saying that for a control volume is to recognize that the amount of energy inside the control volume may be changing with time. 
Uh, so there's a rate of change of energy inside the control volume, a DDT of energy inside the control volume. It may be zero or it may not be zero, but in general, there may be something there. If the amount of energy inside the control volume is changing with time, that energy must be coming from somewhere. So there are a few different ways energy can get into or out of that control volume. One is that heat can be transferred in, and that's our Q dot. Heat transfer, remember, we consider it to be positive if heat is coming into a system. So this appears here as a positive term. Uh, work may be moving energy in or out of the system. In our steam turbine, the turbine shaft is taking work out of the system. The steam is doing work. Now, because work is considered positive when it goes out of the system, we have it here with a minus sign in front of it. We are subtracting it. Uh, the, another thing that can happen is that the steam coming into and out of our control volume it brings energy with it. It has internal energy, it has kinetic energy, and so on. So uh, we have energy transported in. That is a positive contribution to the energy of our control volume. Energy transported out through the outlet is a negative contribution, so it has a minus sign. Now we can write that down uh, mathematically. Uh, we just really just attach some symbols to those things. ECV is our uh, energy inside the control volume. We have the rate of change of that. Q dot is the heat transfer rate minus W dot, the shaft power or work rate. Uh, we might have more than one inlet, so I've done here a summation over all the inlets. And at each inlet, we have some energy transport rate. We have a mass flow rate times specific energy. That small e, that specific energy, includes all the kinds of energy that are transported by the steam. And we subtract energy transport rates at the outlets. Now we need to look a bit more closely at the work term in that equation. And it breaks down into a few different kinds of work. The most obvious one of them is uh, shaft work, which is for the for our steam turbine, is work that the steam does on the rotor uh, and that the shaft takes out of the control volume. We could have boundary work. If the boundaries of this control volume were moving, if, for example, if part of this wall was a piston that moved in and out uh, and our control volume boundary moved with it, then we'd have some work there. We don't have that for the particular case of a, a steam turbine, but sometimes we'll have it. The tricky one is the flow work. So fluid that's coming in at the inlet uh, is pushing on fluid that's in front of it and moving it out of the way. And this incoming fluid is doing work on the fluid that's already inside. And the opposite is happening at the outlet. So this is a little bit subtle, uh, but it turns out to be significant and we have to account for it properly. So here's a zoom in on a very crude cartoon of the outlet of a control volume. We take a snapshot at a time t and at that instant we have some fluid that is inside the control volume, which is shown in red. We have some fluid that is just outside the control volume, which is shown in pale blue. And if we let that flow for a short period of time, dt, some of the red fluid that's inside is going to extrude its way out through that opening into that outlet duct and displace some of the blue fluid. We're now at a later time, t plus dt. And the question is, over that window of time, dt, how much work does the red fluid do on the blue fluid? The parameters that will matter here are the outlet area, A, which is the cross-sectional area of this duct, the velocity, V, and the pressure, P, at that outlet. Now, in that period of time, dt, we know how far the fluid moves into the duct, it moves the distance of e dt. We know what, f what force is applied here at the boundary between the uh, two fluids. We know that the red fluid is exerting a force on the blue fluid, which is due to its pressure, and that force is pa. And of course, the blue fluid is pushing back with an equal and opposite reaction on the red fluid. Now, so the work done, in that period of time, uh, it's an infinitesimal period of time, so it's an infinitesimal work. The work done is force, PA, times distance, which is VDT. So the work done per unit time, uh, let's put a subscript F, because this is flow work. The work done per unit time, um, we divide both sides by DT, and we get PAV, which is pretty simple which is pretty nice. And it looks a little bit like 
the equation for uh, mass flow rate. And that actually is a clue that allows us to simplify this equation a little bit more. So we can say that uh, W dot F, if we take the mass flow rate, divide it by rho and multiply it by P, like so, that one is a rho, then uh, we have P over rho times mass flow rate, or uh, it's usually written in terms of the specific volume, small v, instead of the density. Uh, the specific volume is just the inverse of density. So the flow work is mass flow rate times pressure times specific volume. And that's a pretty neat little solution for what looked at first sight like a tricky problem. And just to be very clear of what that is, it is the work that the red fluid does on the blue fluid at an outlet. And of course it works for uh, an inlet as well, except that at the inlet, it's the outside fluid that is doing work on the fluid inside the control volume. Okay, so let's pull all that together now. Um, that was our first law expression from before. We're going to start filling in some detail on that now. We are going to uh, take the uh, total work term here and separate it out into W dot SB, which is the shaft and boundary work combined. And these two sums here represent the sum over the outlets of all of the flow work at the outlets, M dot PV, and the sum over the inlet of inlet flow work. So outlet work, outlet flow work is fluid in the control volume doing work on something. So according to our sign convention, that is positive. And inlet flow work is negative because it's work done on the system. Overall, everything in these parentheses here is work collectively and we are subtracting that overall. Then uh, instead of grouping all the work terms together, I'm going to group all of the outlet terms together so that we get this term here and similarly for the inlets and that makes the, the equation look a little bit more organized. That's the same equation. Uh, then I'm going to take the each specific energy term and break it out into kinetic energy, potential energy, and internal energy. The next thing, oh, what we're going to do is drop the uh, subscript SB from now on. We're going to write W dot for shaft and boundary work because the flow work is dealt with by this PV. This PV, you remember, uh, came from M dot PV, which was the flow work. Final step here that we're going to do is take U plus PV and recall that U plus PV is enthalpy. So this is our final equation for the first law in a control volume. And it's pretty logical. It's a logical equation, I think, uh, and it just comes from an energy balance. It's saying that the amount of energy inside the control volume is equal, the rate of change of energy inside the control volume, sorry, is the heat transfer in minus work that goes out, plus energy that is transported in which includes kinetic and potential, and which includes enthalpy. Is enthalpy is uh, internal energy plus a special term that uh, almost magically accounts for the flow work. And it means if we use enthalpy, we don't have to worry about flow work. It's taken care of for us. And that's actually a, a really neat result and a surprisingly simple way of dealing with the flow work. The final thing that I'd like to do is just compare that control volume equation to the equation for a closed system. So we're used to seeing the closed system equation like this. It says that the change in stored energy in a system during some process is equal to heat transferred to the system minus work done by the system. We can actually write that in a rate form as well, though we usually don't. We can write dE dt is Q dot minus W dot. So this is uh, it's saying that instantaneously the rate of change of energy in a closed system is heat rate minus work rate. That's for a system where no mass enters or leaves. And this is actually not so very different from the control volume equation up here. The control volume equation uh, actually includes the closed system equation as its first part, but then it adds in all these uh, flow and transport terms. Thanks for listening. I hope this helped.